Hello, uh, this is Ibrahim Mokdad and uh, I'm going to talk about image detection in this video. Um, I understand that image detection is a broad topic. I'll try my best to, um, to summarize the most important parts that we, um, that we could utilize to create something at the end of this video. Um, image detection is quite broad. And uh, the thing is, for us humans, it's very easy to, if you tell anyone to detect, a, some, to detect an object in an image, it's rather a simple task for us humans. But for a computer, it might get a little complicated, or maybe a little complex. Thankfully, though, there are many researchers, and many researchers, actually, um, who have done quite a good research and quite an extensive research on the matter as well. So, to us, we will be utilizing something that's already there. So, we will not be doing or dealing with algorithms and coming up with mathematical equations and etc, etc, etc. What we'll be doing now is basically use something that's already been developed by any of the uh, researchers. Uh, the thing is, there are many algorithms out there that actually are used to detect a face in a given image. So uh, the, the the common ones, for example, there is a um, face detection using LB LBP model. There is always the uh, there is also the HAR HAR based model. And uh, on this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about HAR based model. I'm not going to talk about the other models. Um, I'll try to keep it short and simple. Uh, the thing is with image, um, with any machine learning kind of approach, uh, there is always, uh, basically in machine learning you have basically two options, yeah? There is the supervised learning and, then there, is, and there is the unsupervised learning. In the supervised learning, you basically teach the computer something and then the computer learns from the lesson and starts implementing. While in the unsupervised learning, the computer basically learns on its own, comes up, uh, comes up with its own sort of rules, and so on and so forth. An image recognition, and precisely and more specifically, sorry, in the HAR model, HAR model, um, it's more like a supervised kind of learning. What you do is you basically feed the computer or the classifier. When you're creating a classifier, which is basically some sort of, uh, you can think of it like a system or like an algorithm that when you feed in um, some random images, the, the, the system, that algorithm would be able to tell you if this image has, let's, for, let's talk about faces, yeah, to make things easier. Let's talk about faces and detecting faces. Say, for example, you created a classifier. This algorithm, this classifier would basically mean that whenever you feed it a new image, a random new image, it will be able to tell you if there is a face, that it contains a face, or it does not. So to create the classifier is a quite, um, it's quite interesting because there are several ways and methods to create the classifier. One of which in the HAR model is this thing called Viola Jones approach which is basically a, an object detection framework. I have had, uh, you can go through the Wikipedia here, it's quite, inst it's quite useful, and it's quite elaborated, it's very, very, very easy to understand. You see, with any object or anything you would want to detect, you, of course, you need to have some sort of features or key characteristics. Say, for example, um, some, say, for example, you're a caveman, yeah? You've never seen a car before, and then someone else comes in and tells you a car is basically something that has wheels, four wheels, has four doors, two doors, whatever it is, has front lights, back lights, has a steering wheel inside, has, has chairs, and so on and so forth. So, what you do is, you start to build on those characteristics. You know something, you know that this, anything that would contain a wheel, Contain front headlights and back lights, you contain four doors, a steering wheel would definitely be a car. And that's how the computer basically works. Now, 
you give it in the several images and then you tell the computer that this image what's inside of this image is a face so say for example you give it a hundred images and uh, the, what the computer does is loops through each of the of the images and then would create some sort of say let's give it um a code yeah now for the first image let's let's say it gives it a number say um it gives it a, a certain number now that number would represent a face now it goes to the second image and creates another number and it's also added to the to the list of faces to the list of numbers that represent faces at the end of the day those numbers represent faces whenever a new image comes in the computer would calculate a number and then compare it to the list of numbers if there is if the number is all close to any of the numbers or similar to any of the numbers then you will have a face and so on and so forth for for the har like features which is basically if you read through the wikipedia you know that it's basically says that it's been adopted from har wavelets and basically har wavelets is something about um it's quite um well um, in the layman's terms you could say that it's something you just simply decompose something to a smaller things and then to the extent of and then you keep deco decomposing decomposing until you reach a stage where you could actually neglect something that's so tiny and so small in waves for example say this is a complete wave yeah the next you could what you could do you could um decompose this this for example would be represented by two smaller waves and this would be represented by two other smaller waves and then the two smaller waves would be represented by two other smaller waves instead of one and then you keep on growing sorry um shrinking smaller and smaller and smaller until you reach a stage where you could actually neglect things this is something almost similar to what jpeg sort of encoding works now you could read more about it it's not very important but it's good to know that har like features was adopted from har wavelets and the way i personally i may be wrong on this but the way i understand things uh, uh, for me at least uh, i try to make it simple for myself i just think of it as a, a way to, to decompose something to a smaller things so that you would uh, it would be easily represented or understood or actually yeah, whatever you want to do with it. So you basically decompose something to smaller, th smaller things. So the Har-like features. Let's talk about it. Uh, let's talk about um, uh, the Viola Jones object detection framework, which is basically the Har-like features. You can think of it that way. So what they do is when they the first thing they they come up with or the first thing they do it's basically classify. Um, well, not, well, okay not to confuse you um, you can think of it as a the first thing you would want to do is when you have an image say for example you have this image here you would want to f first of all you would want to say I need some features that would actually differentiate this object in this case is this face what would differentiate this face from the rest of the objects in the image so what you do is basically you crop this image so that it will encompass just the face and then you would think to yourself say okay so how would I know that this is a face so you start to look at things now one way to start doing things is to change it to a gray scale so that you will only have the gray color from 0 to 255 but you will start to think okay so I have this gray image here and then you would realize that say for example the nose has a brighter surface and then the eyes are a bit dark in the bottom here and then the lips some sort of the cheeks uh, the cheekbones are a bit lighter here and then this uh, forehead is a bit lighter as well so you would realize that there are some features that you can actually utilize but for you you as a human you know that these are eyes and this this is a nose and these are lips but for the computer has no clue so what you would want to do now this is where the as you can see here in the Wikipedia this is uh, the types of uh, viola and Jones there are several several other uh, many patterns you can think of or many features now 
what do they do here what's the use of these is basically if you come to, to see here there are two regions here yeah there's a black and the white region so what you need is basically in the black region say for example say when you come to apply this say it's a horizontal or let's say B you chose B and then you keep running it over this image you start from the corner and then you go to the right side you start to move pixel by pixel or whatever density you'd like to move or to move on with but you keep moving say for example it reaches this place here this um, uh, this kind of density yeah? so what it would there would a number would be generated say the black side here and this image is much more elaborated it's much more better to see on this one so you can see that there is a black uh, it's over the eyes and the eyes match almost every time this is the same almost every single time this would be the same because it's almost all the time there's always a dark area the, uh, under the eyes and then there's this, the, the composition is pretty much the same so the numbers that you would want to give this place here would always result the same so you would know the eyes if there is a num if, if you sort of uh, if you get two images for example the numbers here would almost be similar so you keep applying these and for example on the first image this feature would apply best so this one here and then the the what you need is basically you see the nose here would be the for example the dark area and then the white areas would be the, 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 the to the side the cheeks or so so you would know every time an image you, every time an image shows up this feature would apply to the nose so this one would this number here would almost be the same in all of the images if there is a nose uh, and so on and so forth um, this might be a little complicated. It may sound complicated, but I do advise you. I may be bad at explaining things, but you may go through this um, um, paragraphs here. It's it's uh, it's it's quite interesting. It's very easy to understand, to be honest. And I do apologize if I did not um, explain it properly. So yeah, I mean, um, basically the the simplest. Uh, I think the easiest way to really understand this I mean you could apply these features here to a given image for example and every time uh, the, say the first time you get some numbers here for each feature uh, you run for example A and then you keep running A over this image from the left to uh, and then you keep running it from the left till the bottom and then you get some numbers and then B and then you choose C as well and then you'll do the same for D so after a given time, um, say for example, the first image you'll get some given numbers. The second image, you will get this. You will do the same, and then the third image, and so on and so forth. So at the end of the day, um, you in so the the classifier would know. Say this region here, this feature applies best to this region here which pretty much all the images shared almost a similar number on this region so it knows this is part of the face and then similarly uh, it would do for the rest of the images say for example this feature here applies is almost has this almost has the same number on this region throughout the images so it would know that this is part of the face and so on and so forth so the values here the values you keep getting here are almost the same um, for the features I mean uh, the numbers you will get here is basically what uh, how then how you obtain a number here is basically a subtraction um, uh, you subtract the white um, it, it's basically for example the black area is basically the density of the pixels here the density of the pixels here and the density of the pixels here so and then you subtract the white from the black area and then you will get a given number and then you build on on those numbers so yeah now moving on to the next part um, the process may may sound a little complex but believe me um, after going uh, yeah, I, I think I think the, the the easiest way to understand this 
is um, is basically you run, for example, a given pattern over the image, and then you move on to the second one. And then for the repetitive process of the image of the patterns running over the face, you will get some numbers, and then those numbers would actually be almost similar throughout the images. And at the end of the day, uh, it would represent a face. Those numbers, I mean, collectively would represent a face. So yeah. And then uh, the next step would be now you can see that you can sense that this process is quite complex and computationally, computationally, sorry, computationally extensive. So what you would want to do, you would want to do the third step, which is basically add a boost training. You would choose the most important features that would represent a face, and then you would focus on those. And after that, you would do something called cascading classifiers. So from the chosen uh, features that are most important to the object at hand, for example, on the face. Face detection, the most important ones is basically this one. For You can think of this as you can detect the ears using this one, and then you could, you could detect the eyes. You could maybe detect the, um, the nose using this one, and then this one you could detect maybe the cheeks or uh, the forehead as well as the eyes. So, you basically, you could think of this as maybe these are the most important uh, features and then what you would want to do, you would want to do the cascading classifiers. Maybe you would want to start when you have an image. You would want to start looking at feature A, and then if it uh, if it was found, it would move to B. It would look for B. If it was found, it would look for C. It was if it was found, it would look for D. And if all of these are satisfied, it will tell you that there is a face. It would decide that there is a face. Otherwise, if, for example, it started with A and then it would it ran over the image, you couldn't find A. So it would immediately tell you that this is not a face. So it would save time, not looking for the other features, and would simply exit. Now, this is a, just a demonstration. This is a uh, it's more to elaborate step. Uh, for example, the way you do the calculation, there's something called integral image. Um, in which you, you basically calculate, say, for example, you divide an image to a certain given num to a number of blocks, and each cell, uh, and each block is divided to cells, and each cell would contain a number, say, for example, the sum of the cell above it and the sum of the cell to the left of it, minus the cell at the top, um, at the top left, which is the corner. So, for example, this one would be the sum of the one above it, which is basically there's none here, so it's zero. And the one at the left is say its own number, and then at the minus then the one at the top here, which is nothing, which is zero. In this case, it would be the sum of this plus the sum of this minus the number of this one. Um, so basically, yeah, that's in the layman's terms. This I'll try to simplify things as much as possible. You can go through, I'll put these links in the description so you could go through them for a better um, understanding on the subject. Um, yeah, so basically that's it. So once, once you create the classifier, the next thing, the rest would be basically easy. Say for example, now, so let me quickly recap. You would first, to create a classifier, you would get some say some good number of samples face samples you gray uh, you turn them to grayscale color so that you have uh, one color to work with and then you crop the images to contain only the face so you ignore all of the other objects in the image now this is remember this is just for the training creating the classifier and then after that you would want to give the classifier some images that are negative say for example uh, images of non faces and you will tell the, the classifier that these are not faces. So the classifier would go through them and mark them as negative. So the next time it would, um, say for example, when you give it a new image, it would know uh, that anything except the positive is actually negative. I hope that made sense. So yeah, and after that, once you create the classifier, you can go on and create a new image. Now the good thing about uh, now, the good thing about this is that researchers and uh, some uh, developers have actually worked on creating the algorithm. And the algorithm is set, and the, and the interesting thing is the classifiers are already there. There are several classifiers you could simply adopt. You can simply tweak them 
or make some little changes and then it would actually work efficiently and they're quite available and uh, I think that's enough for uh, that's enough talking and let's go down to practical stuff now um, I have explained in this another video how to install I'm, I'll be using Anaconda and uh, I'll be elaborating and on this tutorial I'll be using Anaconda to to show you the code and uh, yeah I think uh, you just make sure that uh, OpenCV is actually installed in your system we have another video you can check the playlist there's another video on how to install it in Anaconda it's quite simple and uh, the program is very very simple it's much more simpler than you think now all of this is just theory and uh, you don't have to do all of what we, of what we have all of the things that we have talked about it's already made for you you simply adopt the algorithm and then you tweak it to have you tweak it however you want and that's it so let's go to practice